I got the scooters in the back, V set is attached, helmets matted black, got the Rora black to match. Riding on a scooter, uh, Brian here shooter. I've been in the mountains, you ain't left up. Alright guys, welcome to the review of the Evercross H5. I've been riding this scooter for several weeks now, pretty much daily. As you can see, it's the first seated scooter I've ever reviewed. And it does have a little bit of suspension noise. That's my real only complaint about this scooter. It's the same noise that the eMove Touring makes. I reviewed that scooter last year. It has a very similar style suspension to this. And I think it's just a combination of solid tires with this type of suspension. It does make it pretty loud going over certain bumps, especially over something like cobblestone. So I'm gonna show you it over cobblestone. The thing I love about this scooter is I think it's faster than any other scooter for 679 bucks. So if that's your budget, it's nice to have the speed when you need it. There, you can hear the suspension. We'll hear it a little more over this when we go over the crosswalk. You guys can listen. It's not a deal breaker for me because of the price of this scooter. If this scooter cost more, it would be a deal breaker for me. But for 679, I think that it's going to be hard to find a better scooter than this. Here we go. Bit of noise, you see. But once you are on a smooth path, obviously it doesn't make any noise. Well, now that we've got my main complaint out of the way, which is the noise from the front suspension, let's talk about how awesome this scooter really is. Let's turn on our headlights. It cruises at my weight, 180 pounds, very nicely around 25, 26. I was a bit worried about the cornering on this scooter just because it's solid tires, but they seem to work flawlessly. Coming up on your left. Plenty of speed to pass a biker, as long as it's not a Lance Armstrong. The traction's good. The stability is surprisingly stable. If you want to see I'll take my hand off for the next little while and you'll see we can basically drive this scooter one-handed even around curves and stuff it's a little wet here better be careful we'll see how the torque really is on this hill test right here look at this it's like a drive-through water fountain. Why is it facing at me? That's dangerous. <laughs> Somebody was trying to get us wet. It's a nice thing about this town. This is a lot of bikers, so they have a lot of these little stations set up where you can fix your bike or whatever. There's some tools and stuff. Obviously a bathroom or water at some of them, but these are what I'm talking about. So if you ever had a really major issue out on your scooter, you have a variety of tools here that maybe could help you in an emergency. Not to say that you don't want to carry your own tools if you're like on a fast scooter going pretty far, but if you're just on a little joint and you got a problem, maybe you can fix it at one of these. You can at least get some air in your tire if you bring the right adapter with you on rides. Let's try and get this full speed. We only started at about 21. It takes a lot longer to get this to top speed. And we're down to 10. 10 miles an hour. Not bad for 679 pretty typical actually for that price range if you can afford more scooter you should always buy more scooter but a lot of you guys are at this price point so this is a, more of a review for you guys at 679 about why this is a good scooter at that price I think we're gonna ride it a little bit and then get out to the Sun and then I'm gonna show you some things in the Sun where there's better lighting you should be up to the Sun in maybe one or two minutes but I'd like you to hear what it really sounds like riding this scooter just because of that noise obviously if you can't live with the little noise you don't want to buy the scooter for the price I think that you should be able to live with the little noise for these specs hello Here you got that 27 right downhill the scooter is more built for top speed not for torque 
and what that means is usually there's a motor kv rating and they can put in different motors based upon whether you want more torque or more top speed so obviously they're going to use the same amount of wattage but they're going to have different effects and this is definitely a kv that's more meant for high speeds which gives it higher revolutions but less torque that is the trade-off in electric motors you take your choice you want more torque or you want more high speed and the only way to get more of both is to push more watts and get a bigger motor all right guys on this evercross let's start off on the handlebars here what i do really like about these is they are folding handlebars as you can see and they're very tight they don't have any wiggle and you can actually adjust it over time if it does loosen up just by using that nut right there or that screw right there foldable handlebars foldable here as well this is a pretty secure folding mechanism in my opinion it's similar to my yumi y10 but it actually has a little extra security with this pin right here so you have to pull this pin then that red lever comes back and then you you're folding back that's how you refold it or unfold it now the seat is decent I haven't had it ever feeling like it was gonna break or fall off or anything everything appears to be holding well I did just check all of the bolts before this ride including axle nuts and brake bolts everything seems very tight so nothing's loosening up this is how you fold the seat So you can fold the seat down like that. Looks like you have to take the seat off in order to get it completely folded. But I'm not gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna tell you why. My other only real complaint about this scooter is the seat clamp right here in order to get a higher seat position you have to tighten it really tight and in order and then it wants to almost spring back up so what i did was put some duct tape around here just to hold it now obviously that's not like the best long-term solution my uncle is thinking about buying this scooter too and his idea is to drill a hole through and put a pin at the height that you want it and then there's no worry about a clamp or anything or any slipping. So I think that's a good possibility for people with that capability. But for the rest of you, I think this is the solution is simple. So the folding handlebars are nice to have when everything else folds down because it makes the scooter very portable, which is really what a lot of people want from a scooter. Now, the rest of the handlebars, we have a headlight button that's going to turn on your headlight and your tail light at night. And then along that, you also have your blinkers, which I've hardly used, sadly, but they are here. Oh, let's turn the scooter on. They're here. You can kind of see them in the day. Maybe you can see that on the video. At night, they're a lot better. And these are actually pretty decent. I think you can mostly see them from the side, probably not at all from the back. Maybe barely. At night, next to the blinkers is a horn, and it's actually more of a beeper than a horn. And so you can use this, obviously, on sidewalks if you want, but honestly, it's kind of annoying, and I don't think it's a very good feature. If I was you, I would just put a bell on this scooter, because that's a lot nicer for people when you're passing them. On the right side, we have our standard throttle with a key ignition. This is a nice feature compared to a lot of scooters in this price range that only have a button because when you're running into a store or something real quick, it is nice to just take the key out and know that somebody's not going to drive away. Like they could still steal it. Obviously, a lot of times I'll run it into a gas station real quick and I'll just leave it out front with, the, with it off, but they're not going to get very far with the key and unless they're going to throw it in their vehicle or something. And really, if you run into the store quick, you should always keep one eye out the window looking at your scooter and park it right in the window or somewhere that you can see it directly that's my advice the scooter does have a few p settings they're actually very limited i think i went through them on the first day i don't really remember but there was maybe like four or five different settings you could change not a lot compared to a lot of other scooters 
but that's okay because this is a very basic scooter all right when you get this scooter obviously this is adjustable if you're gonna be sitting down you're gonna have it lower and i do think that's obviously a much safer spot to have it just because if you have it extended all the way then you're gonna have another stress point right here that it could potentially break but if you have it all the way down i don't think this part will ever break the only part you really want to be watchful of is down here on this weld a solid piece would be nicer here and not this welded piece but i think that's why this scooter is going to be really for most of you people that are my weight or less so less than 180 pounds i don't think anybody heavier than that's going to want to ride it anyways just because it doesn't have enough power but for me just because of this welded joint right here i think this is definitely for you lighter people maybe you teenagers that are 150 pounds or less i think it'll hold up i just it worries me recommending scooters like this to anybody that's heavier than me because obviously it held up for me but that doesn't mean it's going to hold up for you if you weigh more than me it has an 800 watt motor which at 679 dollars is actually unbeatable most of the other scooters you're going to see at this price range are going to be more around 250 350 watt motors so that it does have more power but i think in general it's not quite as powerful as you would think it's not really three times more powerful than xiaomi i think maybe it's around double it has decent range but they could have put a stronger controller in if they wanted more torque and like I said earlier, they could have put in a different KV rated motor and they would have got more torque that way too. But the, as far as the high speed, it does take a bit to get to high speed. But once you're there, it cruises very nicely and it holds that speed up small inclines. When I'm going down the road, I don't really have any issue. I can get up to on a 25 mile an hour road. I can get up to the speed limit and hold a lane, at least on a normal road, not on a busier road or somewhere where there's people that are driving fast. But on a small residential street, I don't think you'll have a problem just staying with the traffic. But also in a bike lane, this scooter is slow enough that you could ride the bike lane. I know a lot of faster scooters. I do not recommend ever going the bike lane. But if you're about 25 or so miles per hour i think that's a decent speed you can be in the bike lane and stay in control of your scooter let's talk about the brakes real quick these appear to be uh 140 millimeter and they have mechanical disc brakes these calipers are pretty universal in a lot of scooters you'll find them everywhere the brake pads you can get on amazon for a couple bucks all around for a scooter in this price range to have dual disc brakes that's in the front and the back it it's a lot of value that you won't see most of the scooters are going to either have drum brakes or they're going to have one disc brake either in the front or the rear but then a lot of them are not going to have both so that's a nice feature to be able to know that you can stop when you need to because you got more brakes than you need so the front suspension is very noisy as we talked about but the rear suspension is actually pretty good and i like it it has these two spring coilovers right here the they're sufficient i'm not going to go out and say that they're amazing but for 679 to even have suspension period is good solid tires really put the suspension to a test because you have no forgiveness coming from the tires so if you found a way to put air tires on this i bet the scooter would ride a lot smoother than it does and have a lot less of that front suspension noise and they do have 10 inch rims so potentially you could swap these rims and get a air tire on it very easily i think let's go ride it some more it rides nice honestly i never thought i would enjoy sitting down on a scooter but it surprises the crap out of me i'm not gonna lie it's super fun sitting down speedometer tops out at 27 i've noticed i've not got any higher than that even though i know i've got the scooter up to 30 or 33 miles an hour down a hill for all you guys that are like you know 130 pounds or less maybe you're a teenager preteen, whatever you're in that age group from like 10 to, to 18 i think this would be a good scooter for you plenty of power for you <laughs> what's up <laughs> there's drag again She's cool. I think I'm gonna get another drink of water while I'm here. There's the noise over the bridge. It sort of resonates more at certain speeds. I think if you go faster or slower, it doesn't do it. It's only super bad at certain speeds. All right, we're looking for a straightaway to do 
the high speed. Here we go, 24, 25. See if we can hit top speed, baby. 25, we're topping out 25 now. Straightens out, we might get to hit 27, we'll see. 26 into the headwind though is not bad. That means we should definitely hit 27 on the way back. On the left. See, they don't even have a chance. <laughs> now we gotta get back up to top speed. 25, 26. Come on, baby, get 27. like today 26 is all we're getting this way oh my god a giant cat ah the grasshoppers are after me <laughs> i hate the grasshoppers Ooh, i'm turning around I'm turning around because this is where all the grasshoppers are at and i don't want none of that i don't want none of that they always jump on me and attack me it's like they're coming after you on purpose Woo! <laughs> It's got some nice cornering though when you slalom it. I like it. Very nice handling. It's pretty stable. I mean, look, we can slalom with one hand. You can't do this with any other scooter, I guarantee it. Even like my V Set 11 Plus, good luck slaloming one hand at full speed like this. We're at 25 right now, slaloming it. No stability issues at all. Granted, we're on a perfectly flat path. Thank you, Coralville. But basically, if you have paths like this, this is where this scooter shines. It's not gonna do well on cobblestone or crappy roads or off-roading or anything like that. But if you have this, then you're good. This is the type of path that you need. It's just awesome bike pass which we have a lot of these and so if you live in a city that values alternative transportation like we do here in Coralville then odds are this will be a great scooter for you assuming that you watch the rest of the video and you okay with everything I talked about because let me be honest with you guys I've reviewed a lot of scooters a lot of scooters none of them are perfect not a single one I've ever reviewed has had zero problems. Some of them have a lot of problems. Some of them have a few. This one is on the, the lesser side, but I do think it's more of a budget scooter. It doesn't have quite the quality feeling of a super solid scooter. It's definitely more of a, a budget friendly scooter that's put together with a little bit cheaper materials, maybe a little bit thinner metal, not to say that it's going to break on you, but for 180 pounds, a 180 pound person like me, I think it's safe to say it'll hold up. Oh yeah, some guy already hit the button for us up here. I love it when that happens. The scooter has a couple faults. And I think Evercross has taken my feedback about it seriously and they're probably going to you know same as every other brand they'll consider it and then they'll either improve or not i think this scooter has a lot of potential and i think if you buy it now you'll still have a lot of fun with it you get a lot of miles out of it but i do think it has a couple things they can improve on obviously based upon this video do I still recommend it? Yes. Definitely yes. I think if I was just getting into scooters and I bought this scooter as my first scooter, I would be very happy with it. 
obviously your first scooter is just a practice scooter it's something for you to learn on and you don't want something blazing fast because then you're gonna wreck on the left and this is the perfect first scooter i think i think there's a lot of perfect first scooters don't get me wrong and it really comes down to a lot of personal preference for you what do you want what do you want your scooter to look like so many options these days but this evercross h5 is definitely a good choice in this price range for 679 I don't think you can beat it.